Now we will discuss steps involved in portable water and portable water specifications. Okay, let's see what is portable water first. Portable water and its specifications. Till now we discussed about the hardness of water, permanent hardness and total hardness. Okay, so the hard water can it be portable? Portable means the first and foremost thing, the water which can be, which we can drink is called as the portable water. Okay, the hardness of water or hard water we can drink up to some extent. We have uh, 150 ppm to 300 ppm in between, the water can be portable. Above 450, the hardness will not be, we should not drink those water. And also we should note that the fluorides of calcium and magnesium, if they are present in a, even in a traces, that water will lead to the fluorescence. Okay, the portable water and supply of this portable water for the household purpose is the merely the responsibility of the municipalities present in a, a local areas. Okay, so the local area municipalities they will deal with the cleanliness of this portable water. The, the source of the water, what we discussed in the earlier classes is the river water, the rain water and the water from the nearby ponds and lakes. The, uh, the water from the lakes and ponds will, will, will be affected or will have the microbes in it. So we know that the microorganisms will cause this so much diseases and even that can spread the diseases through the water itself. So the water which can be used is first and foremost should be void of microorganisms, infection causing microorganisms like the cholera, typhoid, these kind of diseases are being spread by the drinking water. So the local municipality will take care the utmost responsibility and they will take care to avoid the microorganisms present in it. So we have the specifications regarding this portable water and the specifications goes like this. These specifications are different countries like with to their uh, the food habits and as well as uh, and their capacity to sustain the, the water. Okay, so the World Health Organization has given some specifications as well as the Indian Standard System or Indian Standard Institute has also given some specifications for the water which can be portable. Okay, let's see the specifications first, then we will see the steps involved in the portability of water. First and foremost, the pH of the water should be not more than 8.5 or and not less than 6.5. So, it should be 6.5 to 8.5 as per the Indian Standard System. As per the Indian Standard system or Indian Standard Institute. Okay, as per WHO, it is 6.5 to 9.2. Some variations will be there because WHO will deal with the, the countries which are underdeveloped countries and as well as the developing countries and developed countries. So, 6.5 to 9.2 pH can be portable in various cases throughout the globe. Okay, in India, we will follow 6.5 to 8.5 of pH and if the pH is less than 6.5 or more than 8.5 that water cannot be portable and also if you see the hardness if you see the total hardness it is in India standards it is 300 and in WHO standards it is 500 I say it because of different natures of the people it may vary throughout the globe, that's the reason it is given as 500 in the WHO standards. And if you see the chlorides, it is 250, it is ppm, actually mg per liter or ppm. And WHO is not given any specifications for the chlorides, that is the chlorides it can be used or the chlorides percentage or the chlorides ppm it is not mentioned actually okay now let's see the TDS TDS is total dissolved 
solids. TDS as per the Indian standards it is given 500 and even the WHO also given it is the 500 and the COD, COD is chemical oxygen demand is 4 in case of Indian standards and it is 10 with regards to the WH and BOD the biological oxygen demand is not given in Indian standard but rather it is given in WHO that is 6.0 okay and if you see the heavy metals even the traces of heavy metals like arsenic, cadmium, mercury is not desirable in the portable water. But if at all, if the contamination is happened in the underground water or in the river or in the nearby lake, that will be removed and that can be supplied. And even for these heavy metals also, the specifications were given. If you see the lead, the lead contained, it is given 0.001 ppm and even for the WHO also, it is 0.001 ppm. And in case of arsenic, it is given 0 0.01 and 0 0.01. So even the traces, traces of these heavy metals will lead to the abnormality in the body. And the cadmium, if you see the important one, the cadmium 0 0.05 and here in the WHO also it is 0 0.0. Okay. And hope you know uh, by using uh, the portable water, if it is contaminated with the cadmium, it leads to the disease called as itai itai it is the disease is japan origin and the name is been given on the area of the japan itai itai okay and even the mercury this most familiar disease or you see the mercury it is also given 0 0.05 and 0 0.05 and this mercury contamination in portable water will leads to the minimata disease that is the reason the mercury is avoided. Minimata disease is also Japan origin. In the industrial revolution, the Japan has given more and more industrial development regions and those regions simply they dumped their heavy metal residues into the ocean and those in ocean, the fishes who have taken those heavy metals are being affected with the minimata or Itai Itai disease and the people who consumed those fishes, these mercury and cadmium are being accumulated. Heavy metals will not be digested by the human body and that is the reason they are being accumulated at the human bodies and they have shown various different kinds of symptoms which are still persistent in those in Japan. It is a, a chemical disaster in this. So that is the reason the portable water should contain mainly these specifications and the local municipality should take care about these standards and these specifications accordingly they need to plan accordingly they need to plan and they need to filter or they need to use different types of methods to remove all these ingredients okay and remember if a question comes in this way in your exam does the hardness of water or the hard water can be portable or not the answer you should remember is the portable water can be consumable until and unless if the total hardness does not exceed 300 ppm. It is said that 150 ppm onwards the concentration of the fluoride increases. So it is better to avoid 150 ppm and less. Hope you know the fluorosis disease is caused by the hardness of water itself and is because of calcium fluoride and you know it is more prevalent in Nalgonda and uh, the north the north parts of uh, Mahabum Nagar district in if you talk about the Telangana state okay these are the specifications